Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here with part two of the 24th week of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be going over a hand from Lord T-Bird, who was my opponent in this hand. As you see, I'm J Card Shark here on the bottom. There's a raise from middle position. Lord T-Bird elects to call with Ace-10 of clubs on the button, and I think this is an okay play. I, I don't really have too much of a problem with it. I think 3-betting here certainly does have some value. If this was like Ace-9 of clubs, I would like a 3-bet a lot more. To something like 750 maybe 800, just to try to pick up the pot. But Ace-10 ace suited is going to flop well enough to where calling isn't going to be ever that bad. So I like a call here. I think there's nothing wrong with that. Then J Card Shark, who we all know to be a nit, <laughs> uh, re-raises. And with Ace-10 of clubs with only 50 big blinds behind, I think this is just a very trivial fold. Um, J Card Shark's range is going to be made up of mostly strong cans that have us dominate. And if we pull up Poker Stove here, this isn't going to give us a great example of what's going to happen, but J Card Shark's range is going to be something like this. And as you see, if we were to just get it all in here blindly, we would be in very bad shape with the Ace-10 of clubs. Um, obviously, there are going to be some flops that are going to be good for us and some flops that are going to be bad for us, so... I guess in Lord T-Bird's spot, he's thinking here, well, I have ace-ten of clubs, it's suited, I have an ace, so I'm going to take a flop. But in reality, you have to realize that you're just dominated by the whole range. I mean, like, take a look at these hands. The only hands that we are not dominated by, let's take out every hand we're not dominated by and see, see what we're looking at. So, two hands out of the whole pile, king-queen suited and pocket nines. And I guess some of the stone bluffs, but I, honestly, I'm never stone bluffing here. It's just not even part of any good player's game. Unless they're a maniac, and even then it's probably not that good. So anytime you're not dominating any percentage of someone's range, you probably need to be folding unless you're very, very, very deep stacked. And right here, with 50 big blinds deep, and a very, a pretty large, facing a pretty large 3-bet, this is just a very easy fold. Lord T-Bird messes that up, though, and now he goes to the flop with one pot size bet, and it comes Jack 3-2. Lord T-Bird's thinking with Ace-10 of clubs. I mean, I, I guess you're supposed to check down and give up here, but... Who knows? It's a pretty gross spot. Uh, he checks blind on the flop. J Card Shark checks again on the turn, and Lord T Bird elects to bet 2100. And I honestly don't know the purpose of this. I think that in this spot, I guess you're just best getting to the getting to showdown and praying your ace high is good. But really, it's never going to be good. I think a better play here would be to actually check back the turn. The turn. Then if J Card Shark checks the river to shove the river, I think then you could possibly get J Card Shark off something like pocket eights, pocket nines pocket tens, and maybe even ace-king. So that's probably how I would go about playing this hand if I was forced to take the flop this way. But I'd be pretty unhappy to be in this situation. So now J Card Shark shoves. So let's try to figure out how much equity Lord T-Bird has here. Let's uh, type in the flop. We have queen of spades, jack of hearts, three of diamonds, two of diamonds. Let's give J Card Shark a range of jacks, queens, kings, aces, ace, queen, ace, jack. Well, let's give him ace, queen, because we can't really have ace, jack, and king, queen suited. With ace, king, I don't think J Card Shark's going to check shove here. I think that'd be a little bit silly. So let's uh, give J Card Shark a range of this, and you'll see that ace, ten of clubs has a whopping 9% equity, which is <laughs> not very much. If we add an ace-king, I guess that probably isn't going to change things too much. We actually go down in equity, so... Um, ace-10 of clubs here is pretty smoked. I guess that's what it boils down to. So right here, Lord T-Bird has to put in 1,700 chips. Let's get out the calculator to figure out our pot odds. It's a little bit different here because we have 3,700 in the pot, plus... Let's see how large his bet was. 3,800 from J Card Shark plus 2,100 equals. So now we have 1,700, let's call it 1,800, divided by 9,600 equals. So that means that uh, Lord t is going to win this hand. He needs to win this hand about 18% of the time to break even. So what can we possibly do to this range to make him have 18%? Let's see how wide J Card Shark needs to be shoving. Um, Let's give him ace-10 as well. If he has ace-10, he's also going to have ace-jack. Let's also give him 
and um, trying to figure out a way that I could ever have any of these hands. Against the range that's, that's this, he actually has enough equity to call, just barely. I honestly never have 10-9 here, or ace-10. It's just, like, impossible. And as you see, if we take away those hands, he's back to his 11% equity. So this call here is extraordinarily optimistic, and I think is, this is going to be very bad in general. Let's add um, let's add in pocket 10s and pocket 9s, see if that changes anything. You see, he still has just no equity. So no matter how you slice this, this is just going to be a very bad call. And whenever you are in spots like this, a lot of people think that they're pot committed, right? Pot committed is a pretty cool concept that a lot of amateurs use blatantly and correctly. Uh, right here, you're only pot committed if you have enough equity to call. Even though he's put in, you know, 35 out of his 50 big blinds, he's not pot committed here because he's not getting nearly the correct odds to call. And this is something a lot of players do that you just, you really do not need to be doing. So anyway, straight card shark shoves, Lord T-Bird calls it off, another mistake, and he ends up losing. And, you know, I, I think this could, could be all totally avoided if we just go back to the very simple preflop decision where he calls a 3-bet. If you don't call the 3-bet, you're never in this spot in the first place, and you save your whole stack. So that's that for this week of WeeklyPokerHand.com. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to let me know. This has been Jonathan Little. Thanks for watching.